Hey guys, Frank Cox here, the Barbecue Pit Engineer. Uh, Sunday morning here and I'm getting ready to light up the drum. We're going to split wood today to get ready for uh, cooking over the winter and stuff like that. And uh, figured I would go ahead and fire up the Super 55 and put a pork butt on today. So what I'm going to show you in this video is how to light your drum smoker the right way. Stay tuned. Uh, here we go. This is my original prototype Super 55 drum smoker. This is where I tested out how to mount the intakes to the barrel on a ribbed barrel. And uh, you can watch that video if you go back through all my videos on the page. But what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to light this particular drum smoker. Now, truth be told, this is my fifth version of a drum smoker kit. Over the years, I've done a bunch of different stuff, including a whole bunch of parts that you could just buy and build them with that are still available on some other websites. Um, the last one I did was the Draftmaster. You can watch all of those videos about the Draftmaster drum smoker. As far as the technique of what I do, it's all pretty much the same. We've got a charcoal basket, we've got a baffle plate, we have controls like the dampers and stuff like that. The process though, as far as how to light the thing is the same, but I'm gonna show you specifically what I do. So there's a lot of different fire starters out there. We've got these things here, they're all over the place. They look like little haystacks. Um, I don't really know who's behind it, but there's a lot of people making them right now. These work pretty good if I'm, if I'm gonna light a drum smoker or charcoal and I'm not really in a hurry and it's all in a contained spot, I'll probably use something like this. But what's really key to lighting a drum smoker is you want a top light. That's what that's called. Some guys light from the bottom. They'll just throw those things underneath the charcoal, let them light and get it going. But what happens is your coal bed's at the bottom and it starts to light that chimney like a fuse vertically. You'll get a longer burn that way, but as this charcoal that's unlit is lighting, you'll usually get white smoke, and if you're using something like a briquette, like Kingsford, you'll smell that Kingsford stuff, whatever's in them briquettes, and it will go, it does put a flavor on your, char on your meat. So I recommend top lighting, and what I do is I'll fill this charcoal basket up about three quarters of the way full like this, and then I've got a bunch of different pieces of wood here. There's some hickory in here. There's a piece of mesquite. Um, what we do is, is we'll take these pieces like this and shove them down in the charcoal vertically. And what happens when we light this from the top, everything will burn down like a fuse. Now this one here is a little bit long, but it's about the right diameter. I always say something about broomstick size. So like this right here, this piece of mesquite. And I'll just kind of jam that down, just twist it. It doesn't take a lot of wood in this thing because it's burning such a little amount of air. You don't want to overfill this basket with wood chunks. Definitely do not soak your wood. You want to have a good wood that's been, that all the moisture's out of it, like let's say 8% moisture is about a good target to hit if you're going to be overkill and check it with a moisture meter. So I'm just going to shove two of these down in here like this. Here's another one. Let's throw one more in there. So we're running mostly mesquite, it looks like today. So throw it over there. And that's kind of what I do right there. You don't have to be like really specific on geometrically where you put these things in the basket. You just need them in there. And so what's gonna happen is as this charcoal lights like a fuse and goes downward, right? We're getting clean smoke off that wood. We're getting the flavor because it's all going through that bed of coals. Now I've got my chimney filled up this charcoal right here was given to me by a friend of mine up at St. Louis Barbecue Store, Lewis. Um, I've got the French side hanging at you there. <laughs> Let me turn it around. What's unique about it is it's from Canada and it's a sugar maple charcoal. I thought that was really interesting and he asked me to give this stuff a shot. I gotta tell you, just from what I've poured out of the bag so far, I'm really impressed. It's, it's really good charcoal. Um, I have no idea how much it costs uh, or where else you can get it except at Lewis's store. So St. Louis Barbecue Store is where you'd go. Anyway, so I filled my charcoal basket three quarters of the way full. I've got this chimney right here. It's totally full. And what we're gonna do, we're going to, I've got it on a deep fryer burner and I've got this uh, cooking grate here. This is something I made years ago. It's just a quarter inch thick piece of uh, plain steel that's like plasma cut out. So what I do is I light this burner and I let the burner light the bottom of the charcoal so I can walk away from it and not really worry about it. So we got the propane bottle on. 
I'm just gonna let it blast here for a little bit and we'll be right back. about ready to shut this thing off it's pretty loud right now but what we're doing is we're watching the bottom of this charcoal chimney through the holes we're watching to see that that got lit and i see a lot of smoke coming off of here so we don't need no more burner it's lit so i'm just going to shut that off and now we're just going to wait until this charcoal up on top of the chimney is a salt and pepper colored uh, what I mean by that is you'll start to see that the charcoal on the, on the top of the chimney, like the top this far up, starts to get white edges on it. I don't need it to be completely white at the top. At that point, you've just wasted a bunch of charcoal that's in the bottom of this chimney. So once this starts to turn that gray color on the edges of the charcoal chunks, then we're going to go ahead and put that basket down in the Super 55 drum smoker, and then we're going to dump this charcoal right on top. Okay guys, so I'm going to go over the components real quick while we're waiting on that chimney to get done. It's actually not looking bad at all. We're starting to get that color on top. So, but I got to put all this together anyway, so I might as well show you. So this piece right here is called the heat shield. When you buy a Super 55 kit, it'll come in four pieces. This one here looks pretty dirty because I've been cooking in it for about a year. Um, I fully test everything I make, right? And so we had to cook a lot of barbecue. That's my excuse. So what you'll notice is, is that each panel has a set of holes. Those two holes go down, and then where your thermometer is, when you put it inside the drum, make sure you don't have the holes directly below the stem. I don't know, that's just the way I think about things. I always like to have this middle panel with no holes in it directly under the stem, and I'm gonna put this inside and show you that. So this is inside the drum here. Um, basically, it's a barrel. It's looking like an ugly drum. This thing's how many years old? I've had this, I've been cooking on this drum since 2016 and you can see what it kind of turns into. Keep it clean and when I say clean, power wash it out, whatever. You don't have to get down to bare metal. Um, there is seasoning and there's dirty, but honestly, we're not too worried about what this is. It's an ugly drum. You know, just run with it, it'll be fine. All right, so we're gonna put this heat shield inside. Remember I talked about the two holes right here. We're gonna put those to where they're not directly under the thermometer probe and we just go down in like this and we're just going to set it in the center now we just talked about how i load a charcoal basket with charcoal i'm not going to light this outside of the barrel you can there's nothing wrong with it but what happens is, is you got to grab this handle either by hand or you need a big old long like a crowbar or a bent piece of rod to hold this as you drop it down in the barrel Honestly, I got shoulder trouble and elbow trouble because I build smokers for a living, you know, saving you all that heartache and headache. So, but anyway, I'm going to go ahead and set it down in there. I'm going to show you how I dump the chimney without lifting this hot basket. So here we go. When you put the charcoal basket in, you don't have to really worry about where it's at in there. Just put it in the center of that heat shield and then fold your handle down. Good enough. We're ready to light. Okay guys, I'm pretty happy with this. You could let it go a little bit farther if you want, but to me that's good enough. You can see there's really good red coals down in there. By the way, those flames are a little bit invisible and they come up really high, so don't burn yourself when you're doing this. But I'm a trained professional. Remember when you said that, Joe, on the video? So look at there, we're really good. So now I'm just gonna pick this chimney up by the hand right here. And I usually set it right there so I can reposition my hand. Now, I do recommend a really good set of like Magna Chef gloves, the Freedom barbecue glove that he's got, something that's really good and fireproof. Like I said, I'm a trained professional, so do what I say, not what I do. Here we go. So this chimney here, as I go in, watch where I go. I'm going to go in like this. I'm going to keep it like that. And as I, as I dump it, I'm going to roll the bottom of the chimney up, and I'm going to make sure the chimney doesn't hit one of my screws or my thermometer probe. And I'm just going to let it all fall in there. We're gonna to try to get this on top of that charcoal basket. If some falls out of the basket, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. Here we go. Now, if you see, I rolled up like that. I went down and I rolled up like that. So my chimney didn't hit the screw, didn't hit this, didn't get hung up. And then I used the chimney to pull whatever I can back inside and kind of evenly distribute that coal bed a little bit right there. 
Now you can see from the charcoal there, it's covering our wood that's in there. You can see a couple pieces sticking up. That's okay, just let it rock. A couple pieces fell around the heat shield. There's no danger there whatsoever. So now I'm gonna put the heat shield or the baffle plate in. So this is called, this is actually the first version of our baffle plate. It's adjustable. The one you'll get now will not be adjustable. It's got tabs around it. I'll be making another video about that. But let's put this inside and we'll talk about it. When you put your baffle plate or your diffuser plate in, whatever you want to call it, make sure that you put it in where it goes under the probe first. And then when you do that, you can just drop it like that. Now this first plate was a little bit too wide and you'll see a couple of spots where the holes are hanging over. Don't worry about that. The new plates are right. So like I said, this was my prototype. Anyway, I like to keep this baffle plate open about 20 to 30% of the full opening. That's where I like to cook. If you want to cook hotter, you'll bend your tabs more open. I recommend the outside ring of the tabs is what you'll bend up, leave the middle ring closed. If you need to go really hot, then you can do that. So I'm gonna slap my cooking grate in. The new cooking grates are not welded on the ends like this. They're actually made by a cooking grate company. They're freaking phenomenal. But this is my old prototype, like I said. Stick them in there like that. We're gonna close this lid. And then the way that I run this drum, I'll run this smokestack all the way open. And then on the intakes, you just need one. Just open one intake up and you're gonna go about a finger width on one intake. That's gonna run somewhere between 250 and 275 for about 20 hours. If you wanna cook hot and fast, just open that one intake all the way up. That'll, with the baffle plate set the way that I said a minute ago, that'll get you up somewhere around 300, but it's, it's gonna keep it from going past. That's what's, in, that's what's key about the baffle plate. You won't have those big temperature spikes. If you wanna cook low and slow, then you would put this open about a pinky, and then you would close this damper halfway. That's gonna keep you right around 225 to 250. Today, we're gonna to be cooking right around 300, so I'm just gonna let it eat. Now, remember there's wood in this basket that's lighting right now, plus I just cleaned it, so it's got water in there. If there's water in the drum, your smoke will be white because there's steam coming out, but also that mesquite wood that's in there is lighting right now. As we go, we're gonna get clear smoke, so we'll be back in a minute and look at that. All right, guys, so we got our drum smoker lit. We're running right at 275-ish, right in there. Um, quick little tip, something I like to do is rotate my thermometer where whatever number it is that I wanna cook at. I don't have it there right now, but I'll rotate that dial to where that number's up on top. We're actually, because I don't have my glasses on. Yeah, we're about 260, looks like to me. But you can just like turn this dial and rotate whatever part up so that you don't have to bend over and read that number. You can just like look at the needle and it's straight up, you're good enough. So anyway, it cleared up, we're doing really good. I'm gonna go get a pork butt ready and we're gonna cook today. So till next time, keep your smoke thin and blue. Appreciate you. If you want one of these drum smokers, go over to smokerplans.net or click the link in this video to learn more information. By the way, the chat on the website literally goes to me and Lisa and we will answer any question you have. See you later.